Hello, and thank you for joining me for this guided project this for data analyst track. Uh, it's drugged islanders. It's uh, they give islanders Zal Prazolam, Xanax, and Trizaloram Halcyon. Anyways, those names are difficult to uh, pronounce. And uh, placebo as well. So just to see the effect of those drugs versus placebo on islanders. Uh, I thought this. I just thought this would be kind of fun. I was curious when I first saw this on Kaggle, and so this would be a good one for the data analyst track. Uh, you can see the full uh, the data set on Kaggle here, uh, and we'll go through it. So just some questions to answer. Kind of keep in mind as we'll go through the the workflow today. So. Connecting to my Google Drive, Google Colab, Import Drive, Drive Mount. Content is the upper folder that everything kind of sits in. Uh, G Drive is what you call, um, I guess this is the folder you put your My Drive, your My Drive in. Uh, just to show you quickly. Uh, so you'll we'll see here when this is done mounting, you'll see I'll re I can either refresh this right here. Or da, 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 it's going to take a little while this morning. And so if I refresh this, this is my G drive. That's this one right here. And inside is my drive. And then to select the copy the file path down below when we do the uh, the importing of the data, you would just get these three little circles right here, copy path when you get to your CSV file in your my drive. Okay? Or in your Google Drive. So here what we're going to do is import pandas, numpy, uh, matplotlib.pyplot, plt, and then we're also going to use seaborn, seaborn as SMS. Okay, so import those. Seaborn is an amazing visualization library, so of course we want to use that. Uh, here we're going to load up our data. So here's my really long file path. Yours, yours won't be so long, but you would just take that, copy these three little stars right here, copy file path, and then copy right there. And we're going to go read underscore csv to read up the CSV. I always like to start out when I load up the data just to make sure it is exactly what I expect it to be. I'm gonna do dot head, get an impression here, and we start to notice here, lots of times when you save a CSV file, you can forget to say index equals false, and you'll bring this kind of unimportant index into your data set. Uh, so here we're just gonna drop that. So you'll see here, we're gonna go df dot drop, uh, we're going to go unnamed zero. We're going to go access equals one. And we're going to go in place equals true to make sure that it actually is processing this on the underlying data frame. And when we run bf.head again, we'll see now we don't have this unnamed index that we don't need. We do have the index that was provided. Uh, and we'll see if that turns out to be valuable as we go through this. So one thing I really like to do is define a color palette. So we're just not using the default. Uh, colors, the default colors in Seaborn are beautiful, but got to be different every now and then, right? So here we'll do palette. I go to colormine.io, which is an amazing website, AI to choose colors for you, and it works really well. Uh, and so here I just choose color palette, and we'll use that. So you can go right now and choose your own colors if you would like, uh, and use them in your workflow down below. Okay, so here what we'll do is uh, we're going to plot the distribution. We're going to make a memory score because there's a memory score after and before and it would be good to look at the difference the change in the memory score so we're just going to make that to get started today uh and just know i didn't realize this at first i had done some other things and i was like oh i want to look at this it would be best to do up above so i came back up and did it so the workflow the way it reads is not always the way that it was developed and that's something to keep in mind so here we go after df mem score after minus df mem score before here we're going to go equals d dif diff diff dot plot yeah, p l o t kind equals hist and then what we'll do is color equals palette and we're taking the second second value the, from the first position uh position zero one two so we're taking the seven seven six six d and this is what the color looks like down here so let me just run these two and we'll continue. Okay. So here what I'm going to do is inspect the data types. So df.info, make sure we get this. And really important to look at the data types here. They always kind of come back to haunt you if you don't check on them. So uh, here what I'm going to do is go through and just show quickly columns, 
what we're looping through, we're looping through a list of the column names. And then to make it organic, so we just do the whole column name, all we can just use df.columns without any exceptions. We use an if statement to control what happens for, for each column. So here what we do is we'll do feeds. So there's gonna be index, first name, last name, each time we go through the iteration. So we'll go feet, df square brackets feet. So this column, we're gonna select it. We're gonna check that the D type is equal to an object. If it is equal to an object, we're gonna do a count lot and we're gonna set our data equals df, x equals feet. So it's the same as the column title name that we'll be selecting from the df that we're giving data, okay? And then if it's not an object, so anything else, a number, which is all we have, because we check df.info, we're gonna go else, and then we'll just do a hist log here. Uh, we're gonna go x again here, and x equals feet. Um, we're gonna do title with the column title name, we're going to do font size 18, font weight, so we're going to make a bold uh, plot, we're going to go plt dot, uh, x ticks, and this we're going to set the rotation to 65, just because we got a little scrunched up on a few of these, um, and so we'll use this, and so here we go, we got our nice distributions, and we could go through and analyze these, which take a while, but really I have the observations that I found and so we could read through these and at least see if they, if you understand why I said these or if you agree or disagree, send me a message. Uh, here what I did, because I'm a nice teacher, I just, uh, we just copied and pasted that loop uh, many times over, we're gonna use it a few times today. Uh, so it's copy and paste, but here we're changing the hue equals happy sad group. So let's just run that. And now we're going to get the distributions, but now we're going to get the texture of the happy sad group. So you can see here, happy sad group on each drug. We can see roughly the same for, for every drug um, and different. Uh, really doesn't seem to have too much effect. It's kind of randomly dispersed, but that's what we wanted to know. Happy sad group isn't kind of uh, really having an effect on, on, on the trial. So here what we're going to do is that was interesting so i want to see a little bit see if the difference specifically was different so i'm going to do tf dot group by and i did this because there wasn't a clear answer in the graphics so looking at uh, just the numbers can give us an answer so we're going to go df dot group by happy sad group we're going to take the mean of those columns uh and we're going to get the happy sad group and you can see it's, it's a little different but i wouldn't say it's substantially different and the sad group has a better memory better change in the memory. So it's interesting. Um, and so yeah, interesting. So going through that, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is go by the distribution of drugs. So by drugs, we're gonna, same thing we did with the, we're gonna go value underscore counts, counts, plural, and then we're gonna go do a pandas plot. Right now. It's a really good use case of just doing an easy pandas plot um, instead of seaboard. Uh, sometimes pandas is just really too easy. We see we have an even number roughly of each drug type. Again, I copied and pasted the loop from up above, but here what we're doing is we're doing drug in both of the hue arguments here. You can see that we're doing drug. So let's run those. Um, da, da, da. And here it takes a little while, but we can see now we, we get them separated by color. And so what's interesting, I would say that we can notice from this, they're all kind of interesting, but really what we notice after is the diff is very distinctly different for the drug A, which is Xanax. And the other two, the placebo and the other drug, really don't seem to have a noticeable change. But really, we are noticing a very just obvious kind of change here with Xanax. Uh, and so we'll explore that a little bit better, but that's really kind of what we're noticing is that Xanax seems to have an effect on your memory if you're an Islander, which I I don't know. Uh, maybe next time I'm studying, I should try a little Xanax, but I, I didn't say that. Uh, just listening to the data, uh, and, you know, uh anyways so here we're doing the distribution by category age age category so we're going to make a category of the age column and then do the same thing just kind of inspect it a little bit by that value so here what we're going to do is we see the age plot we see the distribution of this plot we're going to make a little function and then we're going to use it um to create a new column so here what we're going to do uh we're going to go df define age our function we're going to sit x and x is going to be the value in each row as we kind of loop through or iterate through. We're going to use an iterative function, so it's going to go through each row, but it's going to be the value in the row at the time. Uh, and so we're going to go if 
the value is greater than 50, we'll set it to senior, which is fine as a young senior, uh, else if, L if, L if, X is less than 30, we're going to say it's a young person, not uh, young, and it else, so if it's in the middle, we're going to say it's an adult. So just kind of make it super simple and easy. And then we're going to return the value that we've assigned to either one of these categories. Uh, and so then what we'll do, we'll define this function. And then the next thing we'll use dot apply. Dot apply. And you can see, okay, we get now, now we have this. It's we're giving it the function uh, that we just created without the parentheses. And what it's doing, we're passing it x. Applies passing an x. It's running us returning another value. So we're assigning it to a new column, cat underscore age. We can use that in the function in the for loop we created above. We're just changing the hue to cat underscore age and running that. And you can see here, I would notice uh, really there isn't really a huge change to FYI age. Interesting, there is a smaller uh, group of seniors, but that's how we split the data. So, but another, I really wouldn't say there was a noticeable change. Uh, in anything, but you can expect it to happen. Here we're going to do the same thing uh, with the happy sad group, but we're going to change it into variables so that we can inspect the correlation. Uh, I thought it would be kind of interesting. So you're going to do define happy group to int if x is h. So if the value in the row is h value 1, else if the value is equal to s, so create the logic statement, the value is 0, we're going to return the value and then we'll do like we did before, apply to the apply the function that we created up above. Okay, and so now we have zeros and ones in a new int category. We'll do the same thing for the drug to kind of get a good impression of this. Uh, and what we're noticing is the A drug, the Xanax, is good. So here what we're going to do is we're going to define, so we're going to go drug DRG to int. So I'm just making this as obvious as possible. Define that. And so I have the rest of the function already completed for us today. So if it's A, it's a value 0. The other two are value, or sorry, if it's A, it's a value 1. T and S are 0. Because we know there's really no change. So I just wanted to inspect, inspect specifically that relationship. But you can change this and inspect you know, the relationship in different ways. Um, okay, so here we're going to do down in the next row after we define this function. We're going to use it to extract that. So we apply. And then we'll apply ERG to INC. Okay, so apply that. And then we have uh, the drugs. So we're using our bivariate analysis and we'll do pair lot. Okay. So run the pair plot and do it. Okay, yeah, so now we have a pair plot. And I think the one thing to kind of point out, there's lots that you can expect to solve, but we're noticing that the drug int and the difference have a relationship here. So this is kind of interesting. Looking at the next graphic down below, I think this is the way to help confirm this. I usually run these two together, so we'll, we'll do the pair plot, and then we'll do a heat map. And we're going to put in the heat map df.core, so the correlation matrix which is a nice correlation matrix. Just to do something fun, we're going to use instead of the standard palettes or one of the predefined palettes, we're going to create our own color palette. So we'll go S and we'll give CMAP equals SNS dot diverging palettes. That's diverging palettes. We're going to give it two values. Maybe between, so we're going to give it two values. It's going to be between zero and 360, so it's good to try. You get a multiply with these. Um, and here we're going to do the center is light because this is good to emphasize um, positive and negative correlations with um, with this, with the, with the uncorrelated values being light colored or unimportant. So I like this when we're trying to emphasize positive and negative correlations or when there is positive and negative correlations. So there's set. That's is it. And so here we're kind of confirming that there is a good relationship between the drug and the difference in uh, value. So really, we, we can see there's a relationship between uh, Xanax, the Zao Pro Zao, <laughs> and the memory score. It's interesting. I don't know what you can take away from that. Don't 
don't, I'm not telling you to use, do Xanax, but, you know, here we're seeing that the Islanders have made them a little bit smarter for a little while, so. Anyways, thank you for joining me on this uh, guided project, and I will see you next time. Bye!